Many of the largest cross-border forced migrations of modern times have taken place in South Asia. Yet none of the countries of South Asia, with the exception of Afghanistan, have ratified the 1951 Refugee Convention and its 1967 Protocol. What does that tell us? Critics of the convention like to suggest that this illustrates uh, that South Asia has managed its refugee crises perfectly well uh, outside the legal framework of the convention, and this shows its redundance. I would disagree with this kind of thinking. You only need to look at the condition of refugees in India to see that their prospects of protection and naturalization are uh, shaped by ad hoc arrangements and, as has been quite well aired within the media in recent times, have been at times subject to various kinds of discrimination. Similarly, in Pakistan, the condition of refugees is shaped by uh, geopolitical factors. So in the 1980s, Afghans were welcomed into Pakistan because it was politically expedient to do so during the Cold War, but it seems quite clear that if they needed refuge today or tomorrow, uh, the kind of hospitality they experienced in the 1980s may well not be available. Ratifying the Refugee Convention of 1951 would be a good first step toward reading South Asia of these kinds of discriminations and distortions in the way it treats its refugees. It would allow for the creation of a fairer, more robust uh, system of dealing with refugee situations, one in which legal and humanitarian principles could be applied rather than politicized ad hoc arrangements which often produce discriminatory outcomes for refugees. So that's why I would say that even at a time where many of the founding signatories of the Refugee Convention seem unconvinced of its value, South Asia, for the benefit of its own people, has every reason to embrace it.